Hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. Here we are, Jess and Dave, Rushed Vibes rushing, ready to vibe with our tribe. I'm still working on it, um, but I'm going to come up with something, and it's it's going to be it's going to be hot fire, excorci- excorciating. I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but it's going to be fire, um, just fire emojis. But at least we've mastered hi, hello, hey, and opinionated truth. So we're here for another episode of Rushed Vibes. We made it. Uh, Memorial Day has concluded. Um, it's an interesting weekend. I, I I think I felt like Monday was Sunday. I was just off in terms of what day of the week it was. It was like a weird twilight zone type of thing. I don't know if I'm using that term right because I never actually watched the twilight zone. Um, but yeah, school's out for the little one. She graduated. So we're super proud of our our solace, rushed vibes, rushing. Uh, she graduated kindergarten, youngest in her class. We fought. We got her to start kindergarten early, and uh, they tried it. They tried me, but uh, I put up them smoke signals, and they didn't want it. So she did that. She's going to kindergarten. She was in her little cap and gown looking precious, and... Uh, and then we had a three-day weekend that just kind of threw everybody off. So we made it. Our youngest has turned into a terror. But she's letting us sleep in a little bit longer these days. So can't complain too much. But uh, since I've spoken for the first two minutes and 24 seconds, I'm going to hush up and uh, pass the assist over that away yeah so the the weekend was was equally long and short um we did celebrate our oldest graduating from from kindergarten no wait she finished kindergarten she graduated on wednesday mm-hmm. last day of school was friday um and they had the dopest little cap and gowns for them that they like strutted in had the little graduation song playing it was it was pretty awesome um, but yeah, it was, uh, we didn't go anywhere. Like, you know, most people, um, well, traditionally most people would, uh, we, we had a couple of friends and family who, who went to the beach and whatnot. We stayed local, um, had, uh, had some trips down to, uh, my brother's house Saturday and, and Sunday, but it was so crazy because I woke up, I knew Sunday when I went down that it was Sunday, meaning that the next day was Monday. But for some reason, when I woke up Monday, I thought it was Sunday. And so I was thinking, oh, I got another, I have another day on the, on the three day weekend. So it's not like I have to go to work tomorrow. And then it was like five, six, seven o'clock Monday where I realized like, oh shoot, it's Monday. So we are actually recording this on Tuesday night and you will be watching this on Wednesday. So that means a long, a long night for me, but that's okay because it's what we do. For, for the Vibe Tribe, we we push through, we persevere, and we drop Wednesday mornings between 8.30 and 10, giving myself a little bit of a window to take a, take a nap. But yeah, it's um, Memorial Day. You know, it's crazy. We're almost halfway through, basically halfway through 2021, mm-hmm. and it feels like 2021 just started. And um, a couple more weeks, so it'll be Juneteenth. Same weekend as Father's Day, so shout out to all the black dads out there. We get to be celebrated. We get to celebrate, you know, Juneteenth and then and then be celebrated yeah. the next day. So that's that's awesome. And yeah, it's just the year is the year is flying by. And uh, this is episode number twenty eight of of Rush Vibes. I'm glad so. someone's keeping track because I I keep forgetting. Yeah, well, I I forget I forget too. But luckily, one when you upload the podcast to the RSS feed and Apple and Google and all that. It, it asks you episode number. So I just go back and look at the episode before. Oh. And I'm like, okay, well, it was 26 when I was 27. The only thing is, is if I mess up somewhere down the line, I'm not self-checking myself. So it would just be like, it just be wrong. So hopefully no one's, no one's that focused in it. No, nah, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's one thing I, I can't mess up. So 
but famous we'll see. Last words. Yeah, family. Yeah, famous last words. But yeah. So Juneteenth is coming up. Father's Day is coming up. I'm kind of torn because I kind of want to do like a Juneteenth cookout, but I also want to do like a Father's Day cook because I don't know if it's going to be out or in. So I can't decide if it's celebrate Father's Day a day early and just combine Juneteenth Thursday or make it Father's Teenth Day. Um, so, because I'm not cooking for both. I'm, I'm just not. Well, then you just cook for Father's Day. But then I want to, like, honor Juneteenth. It's like 156 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I re- like I wanna I wanna get into that and honor. You can dress the tree for that. I can. Yeah. I feel like I have to decorate it in Texas colors. Like I have to. No, nah, because they're wild out in Texas. They are, but. So let's let's not do that. But I mean, Juneteenth is is in part due to Texas. No, I, I understand. I'm so just saying. I feel like they are owed some. They are owed m- most of the homage, um, when it comes to celebrating Juneteenth. So that's what my big dilemma is. What. What, how to celebrate. Uh, but there are some Juneteenth festivals happening in the city. So maybe we'll take advantage of that if it's not hot and humid because I can't do both. Um, and I spent most of the pandemic thinking of all the things that I wanted us to do this year when the world moderately opened back up, knowing good and well that it would be too hot for me to be motivated to actually do those things. Um, so then I'll just do stuff in the fall. Or say I'll do stuff in the fall, but I won't actually do it. Um, But speaking of festivals and a festival that I will probably participate because it includes food and it is also um, being pushed very heavily by some very influential Charlotte black foodies. Uh, We've got Eat Black or Eat BLK, CLT, their festival, um, Eat Black. Week is starting June 4th and it's running through the 12th. So we are, I have, I have a running list of all of the participating black restaurants that I've, I want to eat at. Um, I plan on, you know, putting a little budget aside and, uh, this is the first one, right? This is the first one. one. It, It was the organization as a whole was kind of triggered by, um, all the events that took place last year with you sure. know George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, Breonna Taylor, and just you know when companies became really big on pushing focus on getting people to support black businesses. So it it's kind of it's great, but it's kind of sad that you know there had to be an international initiative to get people to support black businesses like DoorDash and Grubhub had to do like and I think Uber Eats did like free delivery um some of y'all raised your prices a little bit um not judging just stating facts um but I get it uh so there are so this is just a it's from there it's just grown they did um just kind of like a preview last week um I believe it's it took place at Unknown Brewing Company Mm. which is based here in Charlotte and they're doing like a a like a, a end of event festival at um, Unknown as well. So I know they have like a signature cocktail. I believe it's purple. Um, I haven't picked Lori's brain about it. I've really just been following her her post on IG. Who's Lori? Uh, Lori Ashley is one of my favorite people. She, she was going to see, she was about to just say Lori and then I just was, keep running because, like y'all know, you know who Lori I is. I feel like if you're in Charlotte and you consider yourself a foodie, you should just, you should, not even just a foodie, but if you feel like you're being influenced, like you should just know Lori. Um, I was going to save this for for when we actually when we, when have, we have her, her on, on the show. She is, she is a She's official scheduled. booked guest on Rush Vibes. So, I was going to wait to say this when she came on, but I'm I just going to go ahead I, and label her Charlotte's top number she, one influencer. She is. She, she, I, I would, I would agree with that. And she's probably one of the busiest people. I think I spend most of my interactions with her asking her if she, has she slept has she rested and i'm like i know i'm not your mom but i just feel obligated to check on you because on top of everything that she does she has a full-time job like in a job like a career job not like you know she ain't like just jobbing she working um but she is you know just a little bit about her she's from alabama she goes hard for alabama uh, especially come college football season like i don't even i ain't gonna mess with that like i i won't drop no negative statements because that's how hard she goes um but she is just like 
when it's something in, influential happening in Charlotte, like she is part of it. And if yeah. honestly, if she if if she's affiliated with it or she recommends it, I'm in it. Like my whole skincare line was recommended by her, and I'm oh. very thankful. I have um, heard a thing for that, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's subscription she, uh, box. Thanks, Lori. Definitely, she put me on to to my my skincare regimen, and I've just been. Flour- flourishing so um so yeah if you're in charlotte if you're in a suburb of charlotte if you're hungry um please be sure to follow them on instagram their facebook page and just participate even if you just support one black business um that's fine uh it it's it it's one business that's getting attention post about it on um on ig tag them in it but you know just get involved and it's a great way to expose yourself like there are some restaurants i didn't even know i shared one page with david i think the restaurant's called ronaldo's cuisine um and he has some pizzas that look divine some like mac and cheese egg rolls like just some stuff that's like culinarily exquisite so you know i'm looking forward to trying that you know lee and louise um is another big company oh we talked about them because we were talking about uptown smoke no uptown yoke excuse me yeah i know what jessica's trying to do um <laughs> she's, trying, t- she's trying to puff we talked <laughs> i wish uh we talked about uptown yoke which is one of our favorite brunch places that just closed out of nowhere like we paid six dollars to park we strolled up in you know seventh street market it was one of our favorite places they were gone gone fortunately they have another location in camp north end um but i was talking about them and how you know he was accredited and i couldn't remember the award and i believe it is a james bearden award that is the culinary like yo if you it's it's not a michelin but it's like it's up there um so that's that's what chef curtis has um or he's been like nominated for just a name drop and nom- t- t- tonight. You know, in Rush the Rogers. memory is working right now. But yeah, so please support the Charlotte Black businesses, the food trucks. I mean, they're doing great things. The food is delicious. Um, the customer service is great as well. You know, the if you go on their page, they've got a list of all the involved restaurants. So I definitely encourage people to participate. You know, we want to see our our queen city thrive and we want to see our our businesses and especially our black businesses thrive and just a reason to bring people to the city so yeah go eat something get your stretchy pants on do some door dash do some to go be safe wash your hands while you're doing it but please enjoy like do a date night ditch the kids take the kids um take other people's kids like expose Mm -hmm. kids to great black culinary food and Please go enjoy, take advantage of Eat Black CLT or Eat BLK CLT on Instagram. It's also the same on Facebook um, and enjoy. And honestly, if you do eat something or if you hadn't heard of it and you tried it because of us, like tag us in it too. Like po- tag them, tag us. It'll also spread our word. But we want to see where you went so that we can know where to try and we'll post where we go and let you know what we tried just so that, you know, it turns into, you know, a vibe tribe event. Maybe like we can gather some tribe members and like go as a crew. But yeah, wanted to plug that. Another random thing, because I'm just on a random tangent. Uh, I don't know if uh, if you're familiar, but there's a uh, bonnet gate that's happening. There is a viral picture can we, of. Can we can can we save that? Because I, I actually meant I want I actually meant to put that. I was one thing I could remember okay. for us to discuss, and I could remember. I could, a lot of times I can't it. remember things until I like the yeah. mic just brings. It's like my so, fortune ball. Yeah, okay. we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna save Bonnet. We're gonna Gate. save that. Um, one more thing on on restaurants in in EPLK, uh, Charlotte is um, as you know, the service and restaurant industry was probably one of the hardest hit during the pandemic, um, and within that, uh, it was no secret that black owned businesses just in general in the economy suffered the most um, during the pandemic. So you can only imagine what a black owned uh, service based business or restaurant business was, um, was dealing with. So uh, because of that, it's even more important uh, that we go out and and support those businesses. Um, It's, it's great that they're, they're being highlighted. So shout out to Lori and and is an entire team of people. Sorry, we don't know everyone involved, but um, for, uh, for giving, you know, uh, the, the businesses this platform, and hopefully it's something that isn't just a one and done. It's something that continues for, for years and years. So uh, we're really excited to one, just talk about it. We're excited because it's happening in our city. We're excited because we know someone involved. 
Um, and we're just inso- excited for the culture generally, um, generally speaking overall. So, you know, get out there, even if it's, even if you just go by, get some drinks, get an app, you know, every, every little bit helps mm-hmm. stimulates the economy and, and it helps the bottom line for, for a lot of these businesses. So and share Yelp. Instagram, yeah. like your your social media is also a platform and that helps. Word of mouth is is great. So take advantage of, of, of who you influence and, and spread the word out there. So um show tonight. We uh going really heavy on the relationship stuff here these last few weeks on, on Rush Vibe. So we're gonna continue with that trend. Um we're gonna talk about um a growing trend uh as it pertains to to marriage and the beginning of a marriage, and we're gonna get some of um Honestly, I only suggested this because I wanted to see Jessica's reaction when I take the the devil's the devil's advocate side, even though he doesn't need any adv- advocating. Um, and also, um, what else? Oh yeah, mental, uh, health. mental health. We'll t- we'll touch on that because that's all the rage this year, and then here recently in the news, and then um, another relationship ish topic as it pertains to kids and their last names when. They don't have when the parents aren't married. So very interesting stuff. And then we'll also talk about Bonnet Gate because that's that's just hilarious. But um, yeah, so that's kind of the lineup um, as we we didn't announce it last week, but we started doing basically chapters in our videos. Or maybe we did announce it. I can't remember. Um, so if as I've outlined the topics, if you want to just, you know, skip to one, you can go ahead and do that. And then we'll also, you know, we'll be dropping little snippets on social media um, throughout the week after the, the full episodes drop. So um, hopefully that's a little easier. Uh, if, if, you know, hopefully you want to watch all the segments, but yeah, if not, if there's, I think you should be if there's one the in particular that, that interests you and you want to start there and then make your way to the others, uh, we, we've made it a little bit easier for you. So, um, we're going to take our first break. Once we do that, we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll, we'll jump into our first topic. So don't go nowhere. We'll be back. All right. We are back with our first Topic. Oh, before we jump into that, um, I'm drinking peppermint tea again and my grumpy until I get my coffee mug, but it's not coffee. So, uh, and Jessica is drinking a cucumber mint sparkling water. Yeah. So, Fancy. no. What are you saying? Fancy. Fancy. No. No alcohol or liqueur tonight. We're just um, being basic and, and responsible. So I was. Um, <clears throat> Why do you assume that because someone's drinking alcohol, they're irresponsible? You say that every time we're not drinking alcohol, you say. Oh, that's not. Well, I said it last week because we were recording during the day. I mean, people day drink. Yeah, but people get judged when they day drink. I mean, the term five o'clock somewhere is is exists because it's seen culturally as irresponsible to drink. As someone with a background in alcohol, I don't I don't necessarily support the idea that alcohol consumption. Is irresponsible. You can be irresponsible while you're consuming alcohol. I know people who are irresponsible sober, um, but it's just something I've observed that you've said twice, maybe three times. Okay. Well, um, and maybe I'm offended by it. I'm sorry if I because offended. as long as I'm not mixing liquor and champagne, I'm a very responsible <laughs> drinker. Yeah, <laughs> that's only on holidays. Stories. Um, so we're dry. Tonight, we're not irresponsible. We're just not drinking liquor or alcohol. Right now. So I was on social media. As always. As always. Screen time went up this week, as, as my, my phone told me. Uh, 17% is kind of scary. Although it was all at a weekend, so I think that's, that's why it happened. That was the reason for the bump. It's my story, and I'm, I'm sticking with it. I was on social media, and um, it would seem that there is a... A uh, growing trend, something that's been trending for a while, but um, as uh, you know, culture is evolving. Uh, less and less things are, are um, being done traditionally, so to speak. We have seen an uptick, at least on my timeline, in accounts of women proposing to men. So. <laughs> As you can imagine, it's a very polarizing uh, a topic. I would I would assume, right? Like either you're like, oh hell no, or you're like, hmm. so 
you know, I was just curious. And y'all can't see it, but Jessica's leg is going crazy over here right now. Um, what is your opinion on the idea of a woman proposing to a man and assuming it's not, oh, hell no, which it probably, it probably would equate to that. Could you ever see yourself proposing to a man in a, you know, alternate universe or supporting a friend who says she wants to propose to her would-be husband? Floor is yours. Um, my disclaimer before I get into my statement is nothing that I am probably going to say after this disclaimer is going to be quote unquote politically correct. And I, I, I the thoughts and opinions expressed I, by Jessica are not reflective <laughs> or indicative of the overall views of us here at Rush Vibes. I don't give a damn. Um, I, I don't think it's a secret. I feel like I'm pretty transparent about it. I am sexist, um, sexist, but in, it's, it's very, it's, it's very detailed and defined. Are you sure you don't, you're not just traditionalist? Uh, no, because I feel as if, if you're a true sexist, there are things that you're like, oh, you know, the woman is the homemaker, you know, the man works, blah, blah, blah. Um, which there's a part of me that does support that. Um, but it's, it's my sexism is complex. I am true to the fact that a woman can do anything that she believes she wants to do. And that's how I, as a mother want to example, exemplify myself to my daughters, let them know that they can, they can do all things, um, uh, as long as they set their mind to it and they put the work into it. Um, but I'm also very much so, uh, I'm old school with it, but that's man's work. Um, you know, I'm 31 years old. I've, I've never turned on a lawnmower. I've never mowed the grass. And I plan to come back to you in 31 years and be like, I have still never mowed the lawn. Um, that's, that's Dave's work. Um, I, I don't even like grass to be completely honest with you. Um, but in my opinion, like I know women who mow lawns. I know women who are in relationships with men and they mow, they mow the lawn. Uh, they enjoy it. That's great for you. That's not my ministry. Like lawn mowing is just not what I'm going to do. That's man's work to me. If there's a bug in the house and it's bigger than, you know, a quarter, that's a man's job to kill. Um, you know, I, I live with a man and, you know, he's he's fearless. So that's his job. Um, sex is, as long I as know. it's not a spider. So I, but you know what? I, I killed watched, a big uh, spider the other day. I watched arachnophobia when I was like eight and had nightmares for like a week straight. And ever since then, I don't, I don't, he can't, he can't do spiders. I don't deal with spiders. Um, I I just, I can handle a spider. I can handle a spider, but like a water bug. No, not touching it. Um, but I am, I am a traditionalist to an extent. So, and I feel as if, you know, if you even subtract just like the biblical perspective of things and just make it just how things have been up until now, um, I'm a firm believer of gender equality. Uh, hmm. I, I think it's ridiculous that it took until the 70s for a woman to have the right to have a credit card in her name. Thank you, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, for making that happen. Um, Rest I, in peace. Rest I, in power. You know, we were watching, the girls were watching Hamilton, and, you know, it dawned on me there's a there's a part where, um, where Aaron Burr is campaigning, and he hands a slip to the women, and he's like, it's 18 whatever, ladies, tell your husbands vote for Burr. And every time I hear that line, I'm like, dang, there was a point where women could not vote. Like he literally said like, no, I, I, you're, you're not important to me. I need you to go home and convince your husbands to vote for me. So, well, they were important because they had to tell their husbands. To yeah. Vote for but me. I mean, their husband at the end of the day, he's going in the booth and determining who he's voting for. So it wasn't until the women's suffrage movement in the 1920s before white women were able to vote. So, I mean, I could come for y'all when you guys don't like, rah rah together because it's like y'all just y'all just got on your come up like calm down anyway um so i think it's just there are certain things that i'm like oh yeah a woman can be president yes like don't even try and come at me and say she's emotional and whatnot like a woman could run run this country run the world um i, I i'm a firm believer in that but there is no way in hickety high hell i'm getting down on my knee <laughs> 
and hickety high I just made that up because I needed it's I, really? I needed an alliteration I don't know that I've heard that somewhere but I needed an alliteration there is no way in hickety high hell I am getting down on one knee and asking a man to marry me I am a prize I am a gift I I I am the, achie- the like the, you 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 earn me okay I determine if you are worthy for me to give you the rest of my life and my good years and my my d- deteri- my body to deteriorate for your 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 seed to come into the world and grow into the next generation. That's on that's on me. Women don't we don't give ourselves enough credit. Like yeah, we we get stressed out and we get overwhelmed and we have to carry everything. The least we could do is start the relationship as the achievable goal. And I know that makes it sound like so um, objectified. I get it. Y'all can come for me with that. But like the most recent picture, homegirl was pregnant, cup in her belly, on her knee at like a beach. And dude was just like, isn't that emasculating? Like She I, was She was dedicated. <laughs> You gonna let a whole man impregnate you and then ask him to marry you? Did he ask you to hold his seed? Like, no, no. Where, where are your girls? Where are your, you know what? What are her janky friends are probably so, taking that picture? So speaking of girlfriends, uh, no, how I would, would not you, support a girlfriend. I'd what like, would you say? I'd be like, I, I, if that's what you want to do, that's on you. But my husband asked me to marry him. The furthest I would go is. To let give you per, give a man permission to ask me because there are some relationships where it's like maybe you you've accepted that like hey I'm cool with like Oprah and Stedman I feel like they they've been vibing for like thirty you like odd to years. mention you like to mention them a lot because they're the epitome of you don't necessarily have to be married to have a successful relationship now they might be doing extended weekends they might be on their bill and melinda they're in that same tax bracket so it's very much so possible and you, and you start mentioning specific but names. I'm, I'm always gonna keep referencing b and m um so they're in the same tax bracket so i'm sure in their you know weird things that billionaires do in relationships course that's something that you know that's just taught and you know that's part of the Illuminati and all that good stuff. Um, But I feel like, you know, at a certain point, like if Oprah decide, I think that's probably a conversation they had that, no, I don't want, I don't want to get married. You know, I've seen bad marriages. I don't want that for myself, but we can have a successful relationship together. If Oprah finally gets to the place where she's like, you know what? I'll, I'll become Mrs. Stedman, Oprah Winfrey Stedman. Cool. She would have to say like, Hey, If you feel if you feel led, like if you asked me, I would say yes. That's the closest, the closest I would come. Like if it was a long term boyfriend and we were like vibing together, we've we're living our lives. We've decided we're not going to get married. But then it's like, you know what? Everyone else is doing it. We've done it this long. Let's make it official, official by the world's terms, uh, by traditional terms. Then I'd be like, you can ask me, but no pressure because I'm still here. I'm still in it. Uh, But hell no. These knees? uh Uh-uh. No. And she has some knee pads. No. No, that I I feel like that's just one. I'm very particular about masculinity um, in terms of like perception. Again, none of what I'm going to say is probably politically correct. You can come for me. Uh, I'm okay with that, but this is my opinionated truth. So, like, get with it or get lost. Um, for me, in a heterosexual relationship, I I just have a certain way that I need a man to lead that relationship. Um, I've never really been the type to... I don't think I was the type to be like, yo, you need to propose to me. I know I, at one point, I think I said, I'm not going to be your long-term girlfriend. And I'm pretty sure I said like three years was my limit. And at the three year mark, guess what? We broke up. Um, coincidence. I think not. Uh, but that was just me. I think I had a different kind of stay tuned for the David and Jessica story in a future episode. <laughs> You're gonna get of tidbits, so you just really have to piece it together. Um, but I, I was never the type of woman who necessarily needed my security or validation to come from a man. Yes, a man does validate me. Um, you know, I know like 
I hate going out. I've talked about this with girlfriends before. Like, I don't know if it's just being a black woman with kids, but like, I hate going out with just the kids because I feel like people are like, oh, you know, here she is, just single, single black mom, you know, you ain't got no man, blah, blah, blah. And I like, I always like excessively like flaunt my finger or I'll be like, oh, I wonder if daddy would like, like, it's things that are absolutely not relevant to him. Just so that people can know, like, yo, there's a man, like, these, these, these didn't just show up. Like, there's, there's, there's a man, but that's a whole side story. I'm very particular about, you know, not a, a, how masculinity reflects in my relationship. I'm speaking about my relationship. I'm not too concerned about your relationship. So if you are offended, that's on you. Um, I come from a culture where men are men, you know, a man's man who then becomes a lady's man, a lady man, not, not a lady man, but like not ladies. I don't need you with all the ladies. Anyway, I'm going on tangents. So I, I just feel like the established, I'm very big on foundations and the foundation of a relationship of a marriage. I think for me, I wouldn't look at our relationship the same if it was, if I had asked you to marry me, because I would think I'm the one who built this. And granted, you build together, you grow together, but I think it's really important for a man to be in a place in his life to recognize that I am ready to leave my parents' house and build with this woman. Uh, women are, we are groomed to be mature and to rear children and to take care of people from young ages. Men are not. That's why there are so many men who are, you know, mama's, mama's boys and, you know, so emasculate and dependent upon women because they're not in my opinion my opinionated truth they're not men are not necessarily raised to be independent and self-sufficient so it's really interesting to me that we're so protective of girls when we raise our girls to be you know you have to know how to cook you have to know how to clean you have to know how to do this 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 and this but we don't necessarily raise it like we have boys going up in these streets who can't like make an omelet who can't fry it. Like, 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 so if, if the, if the spectrum is so opposite, I think if it becomes a trend where women are proposing, women are going to constantly propose to men who are not prepared for husbandship and fatherhood. And then you're just going to have, I think it's going to lead to more divorce. I think it's going to lead to, you know, a lot more broken families or just men who are dependent on these women and these women who are already going to bear a lot, you know, having children, being wives, working, provi like doing their part in the partnership and now also supporting this man who wasn't ready. And then you're also going to have moments like y'all going to get into it and, you know, he's straight up going to be like, well, you asked me to marry you. Who let a man throw that in my face. You asked me to marry you. That's my card. Like I'm supposed to throw that card. When when I when when things hit the fan and you try to come for me and be like, uh, I was minding my own business and you asked me to be your wife. You asked me to take your name. Hell hickety hidey ho, no. So I am hickety, not hickety hidey ho. Yeah, because I couldn't remember what I said. First last it was just time. hickety hell no. Hickety hell no. So hickety we were hidey hell no. I don't believe that women should propose. I think, you know, just an open conversation. Like, I think plenty of couples have that conversation, that moment where it's like, hey, like, if I asked you to marry me, would you say yes? Like, I feel like a guy has, has done that. Um, or, you know, if a, a, a woman can be like, you know, if you, if you decide I'm the one, like, I'd say yes. But to, to blatantly be like, hey, I'm going to go to a jewelry store. How embarrassing. Like, I'm going to go to a jewelry store. And I'm going to tell this jeweler that I, I need I think, a ring I th I think to you, propose to my boyfriend. I, I think you might find. And what if he has the audacity to say no? I think you might find that any woman who is prepared to propose to a man is not embarrassed to go buy a ring because that's, that's how you... Here in America, that's how you propose. You get a ring. No, so. I'm all for, you know, the evolution of traditions. Uh, you know, I know things. Are you? Yeah, to an extent. Hey, that's what I was waiting on. I'm, I'm for it for <laughs> other extent. people. Caveat. As for me in my house, uh, I'd say for the most part, we're pretty traditional. Because let one of my kids, one of these girls come home in 20 years talking about they about to go propose to. You have no idea. To Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, no, Dylan. No. Why isn't that guy be Dylan? Because Dylan seems like the kind of man who would let a woman propose to him. Oh, wow. Sorry if there are any Dylans out there. I don't know you personally. The disrespect. The image that I have of the spineless man who is going to. All right. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I just think it's it's just really sensitive to me. I I would I wouldn't be able to like and then you got to tell people your story. Oh, how did you get engaged? Oh, what is it? This dude. All right. All right. All right. (laughs) right, Stop talking. Just stop. Goodness. You spoke the whole about about the whole segment. Um. You don't get married for other people, though. You get married for yourself, you and your spouse, and the and person your, you're and marrying, your, and your family. All the more reason for all the stuff that you' about to go through in marriage. So what is the least he can so do me, is propose to let you. Let me ask you something. What is the the basis, the foundation for which you you speak of this this tradition? men proposing to women like where does it come uh, from i believe it's it, i think a lot of it is biblical standard so where in where in the bible does it specifically say i quoted that, it earlier no you didn't a man leaves his mother and mm-hmm. father's house and sure. cleaves to his wife the cleave is the buying of the ring from jared's and propose so that sounds more like an uh, inference okay but even in proverbs the okay. scripture that was supposed to be on my ring that that isn't no, on my not, ring um it. he who finds a wife finds a good thing yeah he found someone to propose to him yes <laughs> wait what <laughs> the audacity he like i'm trying not i'm, like, I'm, I'm asking, trying not to be all like scriptural no, with i'm just it i'm just because asking no I know wait, the wait, traditional wait, world wait, is wait, not wait, wait, is is shifting from look, the biblical I said, sense i said stop talking when I ask you a but question, you ask me a when question. I ask you a question, you respond. You're going on a tangent. I I'm just asking. I'm just asking well. specifically where in the Bible it says that a man has to propose to a woman. He. I said specifically. Proverbs. By finding a wife. Eighteen twenty. By finding a wife doesn't mean that you proposed to a wife. It just means that you found a wife. It means a wife is a wife is the spouse of a man. Yes. Correct. Um, in a heterosexual relationship, that yes. just means he found someone. To marry, and he found that doesn't his mean, good thing. That doesn't mean that, yeah, a good. It doesn't say no, fi, where in the Bible does it say she. So where who, does it where does it say that there it has to be, it has to be defined who proposes to who. He who <laughs> finds a wife finds a good thing. There is nothing about is your, what happens when we is, find. It is not our job. Like we we as women have enough jobs. We don't this, need to like. This is a whole nother topic. This is stuff that I talk to my single girlfriends about. We don't need to find our man. We can position ourselves in places to find a man. Why not? But it is hit, like literally. It's in Proverbs, the wisest book of the Bible. It's not. It's not. I'm. 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 I'm saying it is it's not. The book of it is not. Ex- no, I'm not saying it's not the book of wisdom. I'm just saying it is not specifically outlined. He literally he who finds a wife. There's there's no parameter for what she is supposed to do. She's just she is just supposed to be ready to be found. That's another thing. You need to be ready to be found. You can't just be out here thinking that you're would, somebody's wife I would and argue, you're not ready to be found. I would I would argue that. Um, and then what's the scripture in Ephesians, Paul? Um, husbands submit wait, wives submit to your husbands as husbands submit to your wife as, there you go as christ no no, no, no 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 oh man i used to know this by heart because i used to be ready to fight with it ah oh, forgive me um mm. oh wives mm. submit to your husbands as christ no because it's his husbands are supposed to do something to their wives as christ did for love the church your and wife christ died. Love, love your wife as okay, christ so loves the, church, as christ love the church submit and then we can talk about how we define submission. So, but anyway, so I think it's emasculating for your religion. Like I, like, so I'm I, sorry, I'm going to cut you off. Like I've had plenty of friends who like force their lives with Jessica, for, Jessica who rushing, force their husband, like their boyfriends just, at the time I'm, I'm just to propose here. to them. And ultimately, like I, I have minimum. I don't want to. I have less respect if you have to force your your husband you, to be your husband. So, um. Because I just feel like it shouldn't take someone coercing you to be like, oh, yeah, I want to spend my re- the rest of my life with you. It turns into just like, okay, I guess I'll spend the rest of my life with you because that's what you want. As opposed to this is what I want. This is what I'm ready for. So just from my perspective, I'm just, I just don't think, I, 
to me, a also, woman forcing I, a man I would, to propose I would, is the equivalent to a woman proposing. So I would also like to point out um, that there are more um, people, speaking specifically of American culture, there are more citizens who do not identify with a religion mm-hmm. than who do. Mm-hmm. So if you're speaking of a tradition that is largely tied to a religion, um, that may be something that you see kind of subside. Not drastically, obviously. I mm-hmm. think in 20 years, we'll, it'll, we'll still be in heterosexual relationships. It'll still be the norm for a man to propose to a woman and the expectation as such. I'm just asking questions here. I'm not saying that I would propose to a woman. I mean, I'm not saying that I would allow or I would, I would feel comfortable with a woman proposing to me. Um, I don't know how I would react in that moment, but it is not something that I would ever anticipate happening, um, nor would it ever be my hope that a woman proposes to me. That being said, um, I was just looking through the Bible because I didn't even talk about this. I was just looking through the Bible and I couldn't find anywhere where it said a man must proposed to his wife. I Yes, I am very aware of the scripture that said a man leaves his parents' house and, and cleaves to his wife. He who, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Good thing. But I don't, all of that can be true. And with a wife still proposing to, a woman still proposing to a man, I don't know that it, it doesn't, I'm just saying it doesn't specifically say it. And let's not act like the Bible is in the book notorious for saying one thing in one section of the book and saying the complete opposite in another section of the book. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying in the, so, the unreleased version so, from the Vatican, they also, are very clear. Also, because we're, we're, we're running out of time, um, there is an island off the coast of Africa where in their culture, the women propose to the men and the men actually have to say yes. So what they do is they they scout. What's that gift? That old church lady gift. She's she's looking. They scout. Uh, once they find uh, the man who they would prefer to be their husband, they they uh, can, they uh, prepare this this plate of fish, um, and then they they go to the hut of the man and they place it there. And when he realizes it, you know, he has to uh, say yes. And you know, they're even in that culture, they're starting to see, which is funny, um, a more modern and, and Western take on on marriage and that men are now starting to propose to women and they feel like it's <laughs> it's like blasphemous. They're like, <laughs> they don't want any part of this and uh, all of the, the marriages they are they aren't working that like divorces has, has been higher. But I just thought it was interesting. Like there there are obviously it's not a, a, a huge culture. Um, but there are places where What's the name of this island? There are places where it's reversed and, you know, people have been getting on, uh, getting on and, and going along for, so for years. So, um, <laughs> I'm just saying, I stick with what uh, my people are doing. I, I, I just always love seeing the reactions because the first immediate thing is, is women. Most women would just throw their hands up, but you know, you ask some other progressive women in today's world, if they care and they say, no, it's just interesting. It's something that's, uh, you know, it's like I said, it's a very hot button topic. Normally when you when you see a video go viral on, on social media, you have very strong reactions in the comments and in the replies. But um you know, I just think it's something I think if somebody wants to look, if somebody wants to get married, I think it is it is still a significant gesture if someone proposes to you for marriage. Um I don't think that that should be taken lightly. Um who it is ultimately I don't think should matter, but we're all allowed to have our preferences. So like I said, I would not prefer you to proposed to me because it would just it would just be odd because in my mind I'm thinking okay I am gonna gonna propose to this woman because I'm in our relationship I'm actually the one who um, is the more like outwardly uh, emotional and affectionate anyway so it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be like in your character <laughs> definitely not as as evidenced by the segment it would not be in your character to uh, to propose but you know what what other people do is for other people, so uh, it's just so interesting to see people get but so, as so for up in arms. Me in my house, I will not be proposing to any man. Nor when we do our ten year of our renewal, <laughs> Jessica is again. I'm going to make sure that Jessica proposes to me. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back with another hot button topic. All right, Rush Vibes back in the building. I got so hot, I had to put my hair up. Like we never left. Yeah, y'all missed the steam coming off the top of her head. So, um, in keeping with relationships, um, I saw another post 
on social media. I was just on social media this week, all week long, and nothing yeah, that's else. That's why your percentage was up 17. Um, and there was a post where the question was posed that if you, as a woman, had a child with a man and did not get married for whatever reason, one reason or another, and you weren't actually in a relationship, should the child bear the father's last name? And this is common. Like, I've seen people get divorced and the, the, you know, the mother elects not to uh, change the, the child's last name and it stays the same even though, you know, they're not together. So I was curious, you know, what your opinion was on the matter. Uh, I have... I have a two-folded biased opinion. Uh, of course, all my opinions are biased, um, laced with my um, opinionated truth. But uh, so, fun fact, Jessica Rushing, before she was Jessica Rushing, was Jessica Nasaya. And before she was Jessica Nasaya, she was Jessica Asma. So, not a fun name to grow up with in the 90s. Um, but when I was born in New York, I happened, my dad happened to be in Massachusetts. So, he was not present at the hospital to sign the birth certificate. So, my, I think, my parents were married in Ghana, but their marriage wasn't recognized here in America. So, legally... They were like, we're not about to have you. My mom tried to put his name on me. And they were like, so what you're not going to do is put some random dude's name on this birth certificate and then have DSS trying to collect money from him. So that was it in the 90s. I don't know if that's still a thing. Um, I know that as long as the father is present, he just needs to like sign the birth certificate. Um, so I, uh, up until I was 17, I went by my mother's maiden name. And the only reason why I changed my last name to Nasaya is because I wanted my father's name on my um, diploma when I graduated high school. So um, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Like part of me was like, man, New York, you can just let her like, She's a good woman. She wasn't just going to put some random dude's name on a birth certificate. But I know some of y'all are shysty and do stuff like that and then try to claim, you know, I've watched stuff. So I think, one, it, it has to be dependent upon your relationship. If you're, you know, one of those Oprah Stedman type couples where you're just like, hey, this is us, that's fine. Um, but I, I personally, like if David and I weren't married, my ch our children would have my last name um, along with his. So they'd be Nasaya Rushing as opposed to like just Rushing. And honestly, if you, our two kids, my middle name is Elizabeth and both of the girls, their middle names are Elizabeth. So that's my way of stamping like... These are these are these are my kids. They done came out of my vajay. I worked I worked for these kids. Um, so that's that's where I stand for the most part with that. I, I personally think if you're dating or if it was a fluke or a one off or y'all are together one day and not together another day, I think you I think the child should just have both last names. Uh, and then when the child gets to a certain age, you can have that conversation. Do you want to just have your dad's last name? Do you want to just have your mom's last name? Whose last name is cooler? Like sometimes it comes back, comes down to that. Like look at Tracy Ellis Ross, like why her daddy's name in the middle and her mama's name at the end whose name is more marketable. Um, but yeah, I don't know that it's necessarily a big thing. Now, if he's a deadbeat and he's over here like, I want my kids to have my last name, like, bro, like, your kids also want child support. So uh, what, what, what are you, like, I don't get to go through all this and then you just stamp your name on the end of it and then I have to propose to you too. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think it's just like one of those to each his own. Uh, it wasn't necessary for me to put my last name on the kids. Like I said, I put, I gave the girls Elizabeth. That's kind of my way of carrying, you know, who I am. Um, and I didn't want their names to have to be any more epic than they already are. Uh, yeah, they're pretty long. I do like my last name. Um, my maiden last name. It's a conversation starter. It's, it's cool. Um, it's foreign. Except for when people can't pronounce it. Even when they can't pronounce it, it's still, it's still open in, the door to a in, lot of, a lot of things. Um, in Sia, is in that? Shia? Yeah. Um, and y'all still saying it wrong, but it's okay. I get to talk about Ghana when I, you know, tell you my name. So I think it's, it, it really, 
really just depends on the couple. Uh, I know I have some friends who, you know, they they have, you know, kids out of wedlock and they the kid has the dad's last name. And sometimes based off of the mom, I'm like, I'm really surprised you gave this kid their daddy's last name because I know you don't like him. Um, and I know you didn't like him when you had this baby. But, um, you know, that's the traditionalist in them where people feel that their kid needs to have the father's last name. Um I don't necessarily, because I grew up with not having my father's last name, that's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal to me. Uh, Like, I hadn't changed my name legally to Rushing, um, another conversation another day, um, until I was, like, six months pregnant with Solace. Uh, And I only did that because I was six months pregnant with Solace, and I wanted us all to have the same last name when we filled out the birth certificate information. So that's just the traditionalist in me. Um, But... I think if you're not married, give them both last names. Um, if you are married, I don't see a problem with you giving your kid your last name as a woman and then also giving them their father's last name. And then when they are mature enough, they can choose to to take it off or to keep both. But, you know, I feel like kids are supposed to be a representation of two families coming together. So, you know, I do, this is where the non-traditionalist comes in me. Like, I, I don't necessarily love the idea that, you know, a woman has to, is expected to change her last name. That's another thing. If you propose to him, does he take your last name or do you take his? Another episode. I won't go there. So I think that's sidebar. So you know me. Like I went through like a lot of identity crisis issues after we got married, and just the idea of like, oh, I have to change my last name. Like I was, but I wasn't the like, oh my gosh, I want to get married and I want to have babies. Like that wasn't the type of girl I was. So I didn't need to do. I didn't like desire to jump and do those things and be claimed as somebody's bride. But um, yeah, I think. Either way, it's one of those to each his own. Or pick somebody random. Like, what's your favorite celebrity's last name? Put their last name down. It don't matter. Everyone's trying to be one name anyway, or little baby, little this, little that. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I probably should have said this to to provide a little bit of context. I think the mom, the the mother who had the most popular or most reacted to comment was saying, like, you know, I'm the one who buys the kid clothes, I'm the one who cooks his meals, I'm the one who buys food for him to eat, I'm the one who gets him to the bus in the morning and picks him up from the bus, like I'm basically, I do everything. So I'm going to presume the father's not really around at all or all that much. Um, so she was like, so why would I give my child uh, the last name of someone who's not, mm-hmm. you know, not around or doesn't do as much for them as I, as I do and who I'm not married to. So <clears throat> for me... Um, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with not giving them the last name. I, you know, if, if, if it's a situation where the guy is like, you know, he's not really trying to be around, um, or the woman's not trying to be around if, if it's a, if it's a single father, um, but you know, they, they want to like, <laughs> you know, pop in, you know, just in case hey. the kid, the kid turns into like some world, world famous entertainer or politician or whatever. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I have a problem with just giving them you know, the, the last name of the parent with, with whom they, they live with. And it's, you know, you're speaking about traditions, you know, usually it's just, it's just assumed you take the last name of, of, of the kid. The kid takes the last name of the father, but you know, we're seeing now where some things are, are starting to change a little bit. And hey, your, your line of think when you actually think about why we do things, um, you know, and, and the reason may be just like, Oh, well, why, why, why do why people have done this predominantly for like over the last 100, 200, 300, 400 years? And I was just like, oh, maybe we should go about it another way. So, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with parents are, are estranged and, um, you know, they haven't, they haven't been married. You know, it, it was just like, like Jess said, like an accident or a fling or whatever. Um, you have kids then, and, and, and what the other parent isn't around. Like, yeah. Why would you give them? You know, uh, it's not necessarily a right, uh, I think. it's. Uh, I would see it as like a privilege, especially, you know, if you're not putting in the effort to be a present parent. You don't have to be a present uh, significant other or a spouse because, you know, that relationship could could be well or not, but it shouldn't have any um, effect on how you, how you interact with your child, how you feel about your child. So, yeah, it's just interesting. Just curious to hear your thoughts. It's not something that we would have to worry about because... 
you know, our kids all have the same last name and we, and we were very intentional about making sure that the two of them do have um, names from, you know, both sides of their families, which is why their names are so long. Um, I think, or was it Salas or, or a sovereign whose name is cut Neither off? Neither of their names fit on there. Yeah, they're, they're, both of their names cut off their, their social, social security, security card. card. So that's how long they are. Um, right. So we don't even need to jump. We don't even need to wait till the next segment. We could probably wrap with this. Um, because you were talking about Bonnet Gate. Bonnet Gate. Yeah. So um, if you're not familiar, um, a bonnet is a piece of typically satin headwear that usually... African American women, black women, wear to sleep to protect their hair because cotton or um, most fabrics are very drying and damaging to our hair. So satin is a is a material that does not damage our hair, it won't break it, won't dry it out. Um, so we usually sleep in that. Some of us get you know fancy. We get silk or satin pillowcases. Um, but you know if you wrap your hair, which is another thing that we do to preserve our style. Um, and then you put the scarf or, you know, the little wrap cling, and then you put the bonnet on. Um, bonnet is a rite of passage in black womanhood. Um, Solace has a bonnet. She's not passaged yet because she can't make it through the night with said bonnet on. Um, but bonnet is essentially considered, you know, home clothes. You know, you keep your bonnet on in the house. Somebody is you're really comfortable with someone when they're seeing you in your bonnet, like that level of dating you, you've, you've entered a different realm of relationship with, with a significant other when they see you in the bonnet, that's, it's a big deal. This is um, true. you know, bonnet privileges are not just flung around. Uh, I will, it, I will tear a bonnet off real quick to make sure that the wrong person who has not been initiated doesn't see me in my bonnet. I'm very particular about my bonnet. Um, so, you know, and I don't know how other races are in terms of how you appear when you leave the house. But I think in the black community, especially among black women, um, we're really strict on ourselves just because of how our grandmothers and our mothers raised us in terms of, you know, you know, take your best out, you know, your Sunday best. Um, so... I believe this was the Atlanta airport, so it's not necessarily a surprise. There was a group of black women that were traveling, you know, girls trip, hoo-hoo. And it was like maybe six of them. And they were all wearing bonnets. And not like like the small bonnets. They were wearing like these inflatable bonnets. And the, like, the flip-flops with the fur. Flip-flops with the fur, inflatable bonnet. Like if the plane went down, the bonnet could get them to the ground safely. These are some big, part, these are some big ass bonnets. I'm like, where are y'all buying these bonnets from? Because my Walmart bonnets are very small. <laughs> so, you know, he took the picture. I don't know which social medium he posted it on. It went viral. And essentially, you know, like a lot of black men do, he, tra he, he trashed these black women. Like, why are you looking like this out of the house? And it's a very... I initially I, I had I had one perspective and one thought of how I felt about it and over time as I thought about it I shifted and that's that's the beauty of opinionated truths you know they they shift they they can do that so initially I was like man sis is like y'all couldn't like dress dress like we couldn't you know put on our best we're going to the airport we're like going on our girls morning. trip um we, we couldn't we couldn't put a little zhuzh zhuzh on and and that's because one i come from you know i come from a tribe not a vibe tribe like my actual tribe my mom's my mom's tribe my mom is a fonti woman and fonti women are known for just being you know just put together and you know you know they they're on it like i remember one time i went my grandma rest her soul she um she she passed of cancer and the last christmas we spent together i was i i didn't know it was our last christmas together but i was trying i was motivated to take a lot of candid shots so i was starting to take pictures and this woman mind you like frail and sick was like oh no got up went to her room got her best wig put on her makeup like you don't take pictures of the women in my family unless they're at their best so that's how i was raised i was raised by a dad who, like if you're traveling like you we're wearing a three-piece suit like i like sometimes he gets bumped up to first class and he wants to look the part but i think that is 
And then people in first class be wearing like joggers and real and basic. Hoodies. <laughs> like Zuckerberg out there in like a, a a graphic tee. Like this is what people are wearing in first class. And I'm over here in heels. Who goes through the airport in heels? But that's because I've been conditioned that I need to look my best traveling um, because I don't want to be stereotyped. So I think that a lot of it is just the conditioning of because I'm a black woman, I need to make sure I put my best out there because there are already so many things against me. My appearance can't be one of them. So after I kind of took that mindset and thought about like, yo, I've been seeing some of how, like my white, my white cousins, I see how y'all be traveling. Y'all be on some basic tips. I'm talking about like the rainbows, the, like the headband, the messy bun, and it's it's fine. Like the dirty T-shirt, like it's fine. It's cool. Uh, and nobody says anything to you. No one trolls you. No one trashes you about it. And when this story first came out, I remember, I think it was on TikTok or Instagram, there was a nurse and she had posted, you know, one of them videos like where people are like, and every time they move their hand, a different word pops up. And she was wearing scarves to work. And I guess her supervisors said, you know, why do you keep like wrapping your hair? Like, why are you wearing your hair wrapped to work? Like that's, that's not cool. And she was like, my white counterparts are always throwing their hair like under a headband and no one says anything to them about that. So I think culturally it's important to find the match. What's the black match to a headband? It's, it's, a wrap, it's a, a scarf, it's, you know, concealing a portion of your hair because you know that it's not all put together. What's the black equivalent to, what's the white equivalent to a bonnet? And you know, what? White, oh, white ladies wear bonnets. Um, like the ones who still do the jerry curls, they wear bonnets. Um, it's always a white lady on the, like it used to be on the bonnet cap packaging. Um, maybe the equivalent of a bonnet in white society is a baseball cap. Like white people go through the airport in baseball caps all the time. Uh, so... I think it's important culturally to f see the significance and see the balance. But, you know, after I really thought about it, I was like, one, this guy is trash because, you know, why is this even your concern? They're going on their own trip. They're going to have their own time. And I'm sure once they like lay it out, who baby, they probably look amazing. But right now they're just, you know, they're just at the airport and you know, they are probably going to go on a three hour flight and they just want to be comfortable. Like you said, they're rolling out of bed. I think the black guilt in me was like, I could never do that because I need to be dressed. I need to look my best because I don't want anyone to stereotype me or assume that I am, you know, black. Oh, that's ghetto, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't like the bonnet. You know, it seems to be trending. I remember one time my mom picked me up from school in rollers and I swear that was like the most embarrassing thing. And even a girl on the freeway like laughed. I'm like, how do you, we're on like 60 miles an hour. How were you able to laugh at my mom? It's like a little, a little white girl too. I remember like I can still see her face. Um, so I wouldn't do that to my kid. Uh, I'll go out janky. I'll go out with, you know, a messy bun and messy top knot if my hair permits, but I don't want to be one of those people like it's not for me, but if it's for you. Um, but I also don't want to be one of those people who are constantly saying like, Oh, because you're black, you have to look a certain way. Because honestly, like black people are getting targeted no matter how they look. And they're going to get trolled no matter, like a black man is going to come for black women if he wants to, no matter what. So Bonnet Gate has, has taken over. Auntie Monique has started talking, talking her nonsense. I didn't even bother to listen to it because I didn't, I don't know what her relevance is since her little Netflix fiasco, but, um, you know, she threw her two cents in like, Oh, you know, we need to, we need to put our best out there. And I just don't think it's necessary. Like it's the airport. Um, I was driving from Aldi the other day and a girl was in the car with her boyfriend in the bonnet. And I was like, Oh, that's beautiful that your relationship is to the point where like he's seeing you in your bonnet outside of the house at Aldi, but it was also an Aldi in a particular neighborhood. So I was like, it all makes sense. Um, but that's not, it's not for me. So I have a couple of thoughts, a few thoughts. Number one, I need to be honest because I used to be the dude who would go to the, go to the airport and, and slides in quarter high socks, shorts, you know, whatever. I wanted to be comfortable. The, the most, the utmost comfort. I wanted to be 
like I was in bed just at how many feet, thousand feet do you fly? 10,000, 30,000 feet. And that's how I wanted to feel. But after, you know, being with my wife for a certain amount of time, um, it just kind of, you know, doing a little bit of research, you know, like she said, people used to get up and, and, and dress very well when, when they were traveling and when they were flying. Um, and then she would explain to me, you know, her, her culture, you put your best foot forward anytime you go out, you know, cause you're, you're, you know, presenting yourself and, and your people. So, uh, since I've, since then I used to travel a lot for work. I was in, I was in the airport 75% of my time. Um, and I would, you know, I would, you know, sometimes I wear jeans button up, but I usually, sometimes I would wear sweats, but it, it was always clothes that you would normally wear out. It wouldn't be, you know, stuff, something that you would wear around the house. <clears throat> Um, all that being said, I, I I dress a certain way. I'm not going in, in three piece suits, but you know I, I do dress a certain way when when I travel and when I go out. You can still be comfortable and dress, you know, decent, you know, dress, you know, outside clothes. Um, so that's not it's not going out in bonnets and do rags and and whatnot is not for me. Now, they're harming no one. They're minding their own business. They're living their their lives. So I don't. I think it's kind of unfair. I, I get why some people would do it because there's always that thing, like Jessica said. Oh, we have to be be more than than good. We always have to be, you know, presentable because of the unfair stereotypes and, and negative stigmas that are out there about us. And I get it. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it to me, it doesn't matter. Like, just let people do what they want to do if as long as they're not causing a ruckus as long as they're you know knocked mm-hmm. out you know head to the side going to sleep on the plane and they're not you know being disruptive you know like well, what does it matter now i will say going back to our conversation last week if you are someone who likes to clown people based upon the type of clothing they wear to first dates and you think you should not wear something then you better not be okay with people wearing clothes that were designed for you to wear in your bed mm-hmm. and around your house mm-hmm. out to the airport. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that, um, that we're, we're being, we're cognizant of any double standards we may be, uh, living on or pushing or, uh, you know, spewing. So I'm just saying, if you, if you got a problem with Aero style, I better not catch you in Atlanta Mm-hmm. And that big ass airport with a big ass bonnet on. But I'm please let me know you, where you're buying these <laughs> inflatable bonnets because I'm gonna call you they out. They look comfy. My, so my bonnet's limp. Yeah, that's my thing. Um, you know, just don't. I mean, don't because I'm I'm still pretty lax as a, as it pertains to like wearing clothes outside and then like sprawling out on the couch or across the bed. Like Jessica, I know every time I do it, it like drives her up the wall. No, uh, but if you think about clothes. if you think about sleeping in something and then wearing it out to the airport and then potentially getting back in the bed with it or back in a hotel bed or your own bed with it. I mean, unless you got reusable or rewashable bonnets. <laughs> Just think COVID. You, all, all that, like, that's all I'm saying. You literally getting into the bed with all that on you mm-hmm. if you're if you're wearing that stuff out. So be aware of that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I generally, you know, I've, I have thoughts on things like everybody does, but I don't know that I necessarily would try to tear people down on social media. Um, and it, it, it honestly, it, it speaks, it's, it's a lot similar to, you know, the girl taking a picture of the dude's shirt. Like, why would you, why you would know you who do would that? probably make a great couple? The guy who took a picture of the women at the Atlanta airport <laughs> and the girl who took a picture of yeah. the old dude. They yeah. are Our business, superficial. Yeah. They're great for each other. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm not really even going to address the, the celebrity you, you name dropped. So yeah, um, episode twenty eight, rush vibes, relationship vibes. I think we might that might be a a nickname for us. Mm-hmm. We may have to go away from that. Um, maybe we have a guest soon, and that way we don't have to keep talking about relationship stuff. But we never talked about mental health. We'll have to hit that next. Yeah, episode. you know what? I think yeah, we'll save that for next week because I don't think it's going anywhere. Definitely not going anywhere. The topic. Um, and I want to give it more time, and since we're already you know past an hour. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for next week's discussion on mental health. Um, I just want to get, I just want to get dramatic. Anything, was anything, any other closing thoughts you wanted to add before we, we close out? Cool. Well, uh, wash your bonnet, wash your bonnet and you do rag. 
So I hope you did have a safe and enjoyable Memorial uh, Day weekend. Um, and I believe this is the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre, massacre the bombing of, of Black Wall Street. So um, one thing I would encourage everyone to do is obviously be be aware of Tulsa, uh, but also be aware of like the other countless uh, massacres that took place throughout the, the the course of, of this country's history mm-hmm. um, and teach those to your kids because there's a good good chance that you haven't heard of them um, and it's a very good chance that they're not being taught in our uh, school system. So for uh, this is interesting that you know we we want to keep statues and monuments up because we don't want to erase history um, and yet we fight curriculum that could help us have a greater perspective of this, that next of, episode? of this country's history. That, so, um, just, just interesting. I'm just, and North just interesting. Carolinians, Car- Carolinians, excuse but, um, me, look into Wilmington. Yes. Yes. Look into Wilmington. You talk ed- about a race in history. I had to educate Whew. a North, a, a, um, a friend of mine from Wilmington yeah. about what happened in Wilmington. Yeah. They so. you talk about like, you think the Vatican's holding on to some stuff. People in Wilmington, they did their damnness. Their damnness to keep that stuff hidden. So, um, yeah, I'm just saying, it's just it's just interesting, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but don't rely on school systems to teach your kids about our history. Uh, you know, take that take that ownership and, and teaching yourself. There's countless books, countless resources online. Just look them up and just start having conversations with your kids as as they're ready. You know, you don't want to do it too young, but you know, kids are kids are tough. Kids are smart. They can handle certain things. So don't. Don't underestimate them. So, yeah, we're going to close out. Be sure to uh, check out um, Eat Black Charlotte, Eat BLK Charlotte. I don't know why we keep messing it up. That's this week, uh, June 4th through June 12th. Yeah, we're going to put all that information in our description down below. We'll probably be posting about it on social media throughout the week. If you go out, take pictures, tag them, tag us. Just go out, enjoy yourself, and, and support the culture, support the black-owned restaurants. Um, Juneteenth coming up this month, so uh, maybe we'll get this tree decorated and, and take some pictures. I'll, I'll probably finally clean that. <laughs> yeah, we'll finally it's finally clean that. Crazy. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, you know the weather's nice. Um, you know, here in North Carolina, Roy Cooper finally let us outside. So go out, stay get some, hydrated, stay hydrated, get some fresh air, and let's try to you know get life back to some semblance of of normal. So I'm Dave. I'm Jess. We appreciate you guys. We love you. We'll catch you guys next week. And uh, be safe. Peace. Peace.